everyone. Welcome to episode 31 of D&D's Nozers Marvelous Tutorials with Realmsmith. I am Jason Azevedo, your host for tonight and for the next two hours. We have a pretty huge challenge ahead of us. I know I keep kind of up in the bar on how much we paint in a given episode. Tonight we are shooting to paint six different minis. Uh, we're going to batch paint them. I'm hoping to get them done. Uh, we are painting the Human Barbarian from WizKids because I need some Berserkers for our Into the Mist um, live stream campaign. So I'm going to go for it. I don't know if I'm going to get them all done, but I'm going to try my darndest. It's going to be a little fun. We will absolutely see. I see everybody already in the chat freaking out and saying good luck on that six minis what the heck and all that stuff so uh i am on the twitch uh the D, &D twitch i am on the realm smith twitch i am on the realm smith facebook so if you guys want to chat uh, ask questions i am here to answer them as much as i can throughout the hecticness of the next two hours and painting uh all of these minis in uh two hours a uh, couple quick announcements just before we start um, again, I want to thank uh, our partners as usual, Dungeons and Dragons, of course, for having us on their channel and being a sponsor. Also, we want to thank uh, WizKids for the incredible minis, Vallejo for the incredible paints, and then Sirenscape as well for partnering us and allowing us to use uh, their sound sets on our show. And these, uh, I'm actually playing using a sound set that I've been using in our Into the Mist campaign in the last uh, couple episodes. Um, and so I'll be. I'll be using that to kind of set the scene throughout and you guys kind of have a listen to that and then we can talk a bit more about that sound set as I'm painting as well. Uh, if you're interested in our adventure boxes, you can check it out at realmsmith.tv. Basically what we do is we send you an adventure box, one box at a time for a continual campaign to your house every month. Um, and it's awesome with everything that you need to run a session, including scented candles and a sound set and miniatures and maps and all of that wonderful stuff. So you can check that out, realmsmith.tv. If you use the promo code, I want adventure, you will get $20 off your purchase. Uh, and so you can go head over there and check that out. Um, Into the Mist again uh, is our live stream. It's a Chris of Strahd stream. It's tomorrow night. Don't miss it at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, and it is episode four. It's been great. If you want, you can catch up between, uh, if you haven't started it yet, uh, episode one, two, and three are on our YouTube page at Realm Smith and on the D&D &D official YouTube page as well. And you can watch them there to catch up for tomorrow night's session. It was crazy last week and it's going to be even crazier this week. I'm very, very excited to dig in further to that. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, our VODs, we upload all of our episodes. So all 30 episodes are up on the uh, D, uh, the Rumpsmith YouTube as well as the D&D YouTube. And you can check those out there and see what else. There's uh, 30 episodes of all different minis that we've painted on this show. And then, of course, follow us on the D&D Twitch, on the Realmsmith Twitch, and on our Facebook page. If you do follow us uh, on the Realmsmith uh, Twitch, if you haven't yet, I think this little potion bottle back here is supposed to light up. It works during our streams. I don't have a producer, so I think it still works automatically. But if you follow us on the Twitch, on our Realmsmith Twitch, you will find out how cool that is. And you can watch uh, that as it kind of glows every time. Um, I think that's it. Is there anything else I'm missing? I'm looking at my... Uh, oh, yes, of course. Really huge announcement. We are at GaryCon in March. For those of you, I think it might be sold out. I'm not sure. I think there might be badges left. But we will be doing Nozer's Marvelous Tutorials live at GaryCon with a very special guest. Can't say who it is yet. But we will most likely be painting a really awesome miniature. I don't think I can tell you what that is yet. But we will be there live. It will be 40 people. We'll open the event system so you can sign up for that on the GaryCon website. Uh, and you can join us. And the first 40 can sit and paint awesome miniatures with us. And then we'll air that episode uh, that following evening um, while we're still at the show um, for everyone at home. Got it? Good. Let's jump right in here, folks. Tools of the trade, of course. Barbarians, there's two different kinds. We are painting three packages of these tonight. We have some Vallejo brushes, a dry brush, some water for diluting and cleaning your brushes, uh, your brushes and uh, diluting your paints. Of course, paper towel for wiping off your brushes and dry brushing, and then a palette for holding your paint and mixing. 
Lots of paint here um, for uh, leather and cloth and so on. We're gonna use heavy sienna as a base, and then we'll use a mix of like leather brown and heavy brown and bone white in order to uh, highlight those. Skin tones, we've got flesh wash, heavy skin tone and cadmium skin. Uh, some gunmetal and black wash for a lot of the metal areas. Uh, of course, barbarians wouldn't be barbarians without some red hair every once in a while. So for the gingers, we're gonna do heavy red and orange fire. And then of course, off white for some highlights and for mixing in to, to lighten things up. A uh, sepia wash will be used on some of the browns in order to make them uh, ginger fire. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> okay, guys, we're jumping right in. There's lots to do. Uh, I'm very excited. All six of these minis we were hoping in two hours. You think we could do it? <laughs> I don't know. I might have set myself up for uh, some serious failure. I don't expect to get through them all, but we are absolutely going to try. Now, we have two different minis here. This is the one barbarian, of course. You can use this color scheme for anything, really, including um, including any fighter miniatures that have lots of leather um, and cloth areas and so on and fur. Um, but, you know, you can use our techniques, even if it's not the exact miniature you're, you're painting. Uh, if the palette is similar to something else you're painting, then go ahead and use that there. Hey, Kevin Penlilio, good to see you, buddy. Uh, Kevin's a good friend of ours. Hello, Ruben from Spain. Thank you for watching. Got lots of watchers on all channels here, including the DD Twitch is huge. Lots of people. Uh, tuning in uh, again if you have a question question please write question and then your question and then uh, I will be as much as I possibly can kind of going through and figuring out exactly what um, we'll uh, yeah you guys are saying and if it, I don't answer a question please ask it again later on and maybe the mods will let me know uh, at some point. Hello, Lisa Penrose uh, from D&D. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, for, of course, DC Lacerre is in here. Oh, Snap Dad is here as well. Um, everyone is tuning in, and I absolutely love it. Okay, New York. Welcome from New York. Tango, I didn't know you were from New York. Awesome. Just over the border for us. All right. Whew. Got heart palpitations, folks. Heart palpitations. I'm not sure why I do this to myself. Um, okay, so to start, uh, again, what we try to do is we try and paint a miniature from the inside out, if that makes sense. Deepest recesses first. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start to paint all of the, and I don't want to paint them all identical. So we're going to start with a certain color, and then we're going to pick out colors on the miniature as we go. I'm not too worried about making this um, super uh, detailed or a really incredible paint job. I'm not going to win any uh, award rewards awards here. Basically, what it is is I need one d six berserkers for our Into the Mist campaign, uh, which is our Christmas Strahd campaign. And so this gives me the opportunity to field as many as I have to on the table for a um, random encounter. Hello, Halfling Pipe and Yuka the Insane. Um, all of you folks, thanks for joining us. Um, and D Nicole 32 is new here. Hello, welcome. Cool, awesome. All right. And again, folks, I'm trying to manage all of the channels here. So again, if I'm not, if I'm missing anything on the chat, just bear with me and ask it again if need be, and I will do my best to respond um, as we go here. Okay. All right, I am gonna start, folks, with some darker uh, leather colors. So darker leather colors, darker um, material. So we're gonna use a heavy brown that is an extra opaque paint from Vallejo. They're used for base paints. Basically, they go on in one coat. Um, and you don't have to worry about too much uh, about coverage or anything like that. I'm gonna use my number two brush and I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna start picking stuff out. For this one, I am going to do pants. Make sure you get the undercarriage. And we're going to go through. I wanted to paint. There are some um, female barbarians as well uh, that are in the, in the range. Uh, I did not have any on hand. So unfortunately, I'm, these are all males. Um, so, but uh, that's okay for today. If I get the female ones, maybe we'll do some later. Okay, so that is a brown pants. Um, what else do I want to make brown on this guy? So I've made his pants brown, which means his boots will be lighter. His tunic area will be lighter. Um, I'm thinking maybe I will do his... 
Uh, I think I'm gonna do the fur on his back brown. This will be like a like a uh, bear fur or something like that. This is speed. Uh, I'm gonna call this. It's not just speed painting because it's also um, taking a, a conveyor belt kind of batch painting approach to this. So um, we're going through all of them, uh, and I'm gonna teach you some tricks here of how to kind of quickly get through. Again, the point of batch painting is to do similar colors in the palette across multiple miniatures, so you're saving the time of like um, cleaning your brush and choosing a different paint and all of that kind of stuff. So that's what we're gonna do brown on this guy, I think. Um, actually, I might do his, I'm gonna do his gloves brown as well, or his gauntlets. Not really gauntlets, because they're not really armored, so they're just like really high, cool, fur-lined gloves. There we go. Are you guys making bets out there as to whether or not I can do this? We'll find out. Okay, so that is one. I am going to do... Um, I'm going to grab another one, and I'm going to do uh, different areas of that. Uh, Jason, uh, let me see. How does he keep his hand steady? Um, we believe in you. Uh, thanks, guys. I can feel the love. Um, honestly, the, re the, the way that I keep my hand steady for um, a lot of these smaller minis, especially for detail work, is rest my other hand on my finger of my other hand or on the miniature if it's a larger miniature. Um, that really helps to steady your thing so you're not kind of shaking around floating on the miniature i'm going to do his tunic brown uh, dark brown on this one the other one we did his fur and lying area so at least you know it's the same miniature but i'm going to use multiples on the table at the same time this way you know it'll look a little different which will be good Oh, I wasn't going to do his pants. I'm going to let that dry, and I'm actually going to do his, the rest of his, what appears to be his kind of tunic thing under here. I'm going to make that brown instead. Hope you don't roll a one on that encounter table. What a waste that would be, right? I think I'll add a modifier to that roll for sure. <laughs> and again, with random encounters, man, they could they could come in contact with a bunch of barbarians. And barbarians are always something that are, are good to have kind of uh, available to you. Um, as NPCs, there, there are some hunters uh, throughout Curse of Strahd as well, or, or people who are of the wild, so that helps too. Um, I don't know if I want to make the haft of this axe wood or if I want to keep it metal. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to make all the hafts brown so that they look like wood. So I'll grab all of those two. Got to remember that. And that's what I'll do is I'll realize, oh, wait a second. I should paint this that the same color on all of these guys as we go here. Okay, so that is it. So see, as you can see, I'm blocking in color really, really fast. Decided to do kind of the tunic area with this guy brown, and I'm just gonna quickly move over to the next, I'm sure I'm missing stuff, but I can kind of deal with that a little later as I come back to it. Um, and then with different color shades and things, then we can, we can come back and adjust that. I'm gonna also do his boots on this guy brown dark brown and start with a heavy sienna base coat because the, the pants are actually going to be a different color here. I accidentally painted that leg. And again, when I'm painting certain areas and blocking in my base colors, what I'm doing is I am um, over painting into the other areas a bit, mostly because you want to make sure that you're not leaving any primer showing between the colors. So overlapping a little bit is okay. Don't have to worry about that, especially when you're base coating because you're painting over those areas again anyways. All right, I am going to leave his, his gloves a different color. Now, with the third guy of the same type, I'm deciding to... Um, so I've got this guy's fur is going to be like a brown color. That other guy's fur is going to be a lighter color. 
Um... Oh, thank you for the sub or for the follow. Appreciate it. One really cool thing we started doing um, last time around, uh, last episode for Into the Mist, is we actually have um, the ability to have people donate to Extra Life uh, on our Realmsmith, uh, sorry, twitch.tv slash Realmsmith page. There's a panel under the video. Um, and people can donate to send items to the players in game. And so we get the donation. There's a little bar that builds on the screen. And um, every time we hit a milestone, I have some sort of narrative way of transporting items into the game for the players. Uh, it's been really great. Uh, we've already unlocked two items. They got a... The last episode, they got a um, box of Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments. Um, I'm going to go boots on this guy. Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments on the last episode, and the episode before that, they got a healing potion. I think the next milestone is, f I want to say $500. I think we're at $375. When they get to $500, I think they get a potion of flying, which would really come in handy. And then after that, it's the Drift Globe, which, of course, in Barovia, for those of you that are familiar with Curse of Strahd, is going to be very helpful. And then at $1,000, once we've accumulated $1,000 in donations, um, we will be... I'm actually going to do this color. I'm going to do his... Kind of this fur sort of wrap he's got here. Um, once we get to $1,000 worth of donations, then they get a plus one dagger. And then once that, that has gone through... Um, once we've gone through that, then we will reset the, the meter uh, at a higher um, at a higher milestone or a higher goal, I should say. Sorry, we'll set a higher goal, and then um, we will choose new items. Higher, better, more expensive. And the idea here is that the value of the items is the same value in gold as it is in, in U.S. dollars. So that's kind of that's kind of fun. Um, question, would donations now count toward the total? It absolutely would, Oso. Uh, if you go now and you donate to our, on our Realmsmith Twitch.tv, <laughs> Twatch, <laughs> Twitch.tv <laughs> slash uh, Realmsmith, um, you can donate now and that will absolutely go towards um, the party uh, or the, well, it goes towards uh, the local children's hospital here in Toronto called uh, Sick Kids, um, which is an incredible hospital, does incredible things. Um, and we're happy to help them. But yes, if you donate now, it'll help to also get the players an item in the game. And it's all about helping the children, folks. And it's so fun to be doing this. Okay, so that one, I decided just to do his boots, uh, his gloves, and that. And then I'll try and figure out what the rest of his clothing is going to be. So for the first three, you can see I'm just differentiating some of the colors here. You can see I'm doing all different kind of areas. Actually, on this guy, I'm going to do brown hair. So I'll go ahead and, like this guy, will have dark hair. Probably do a brown wash on it. And then... And beard. And then we'll do a black wash, sorry, I mean, on it later. I got a skin, no worries, because we're going to come back in there and fix all that up later. Okay, so he's going to have dark hair, and then I have two different hair color. Probably one's going to be maybe more of a, above a blonde kind of color, and then the other will be, or maybe even like a gray, like, a, like an older folk gentleman. Okay, so now we're going to go heavy sienna. We've done heavy sienna everywhere we needed to. Now we're going to go back, except for the haft of this axe. I forgot that. Now we're going to go over to the other style of of barbarian right after I finish the haft on or the, the haft on this axe. There we go. Now the other barbarian, which is this guy who has this awesome kind of fur bear skin cloak. Um which is great. And I'm gonna start right away. This guy's gonna have a big brown thank you for the follow. A big brown bearskin cloak here. Okay. 
Just check in real quick, real quick here. Uh, always need potions, uh, especially rogues. That's true. I'm trying to keep up, folks. Uh, so many comments. It's awesome. Um, don't see any questions yet. Again, if you have any questions, make sure that you write questions, question first and then your question. Um, hello, Weeping Jay. Welcome back. Uh, Yuka says, are the things I should be aware of when painting humanoids versus monsters and vice versa? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, all the techniques are pretty much the same, um, especially when you're, when you're painting monsters or creatures or anything like that. Um, you can do probably usually do a lot more dry brushing because there's fur or there's scales, things like that. Um, but not really. The, the techniques that we're using today actually kind of apply across the board, depend, no matter what, what you're painting. Um, it just really depends on the texture that you're painting. So that's kind of the, the exception. Uh, skin, uh, I tend to like to kind of wet blend skin. Um, because you want it to look a bit smoother, so I don't necessarily dry brush it, although you can, especially if you're beginning and starting out and you're more comfortable doing that. But, uh, but no, I don't, I don't know if there is anything necessarily that needs to be considered. Of course, human miniatures or humanoid-sized miniatures, medium-sized uh, humanoids in D&D are smaller miniatures, so that will be more uh, time-consuming uh, and detail-oriented. Uh, it will take a little longer, and that's the thing. I painted four elementals, but that was a large surface area, not a lot of detail, and I finished those in an hour and a half. Um, but again, that is a very different beast, as it were. Um, but um, mostly because, again, the smaller creatures tend to have smaller details, especially humanoid characters with pouches and cloaks and skin tones and all that stuff. So, again for that reason I've probably set myself up for misery here but we'll we'll see I'm gonna do his pants brown here again I'm making my decisions real fast here I'm not not taking a lot of time to decide and ponder over what color I want to do things I'm just getting the paint on the miniature and that is the key to painting lots of minis quickly is the batch paint similar colors across multiple miniatures and not take too much time kind of figuring out what you want to do. Just choose a color and go sort of situation. Again, like I said, I'm not going to be winning any, any contests with these minis. This isn't intended to be an incredible paint job. This is intended to get a painted miniature, a decently painted miniature on the table for your players, hands cramping. Um, I'm not using my holder for this, my miniature holder, mostly because it would be difficult to have to switch back and forth across miniatures. I'd just be pulling miniatures in and out of that. So I'm just going to have to deal with my old man hands for the time being. I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to paint these belts and such. And it looks really messy right now. We're just getting paint onto the mini and blocking in those large areas of similar color. There we go. Okay, so that is the first one of the other color. I am not gonna do the on this one the same, but this time I'm going to do his tunic or his armor. Dark brown in here. That'll also mean his shoulder under the armor. And I'm going to do the shoulder pad as well. Why not? He's got some armor or sleeves on this side, so we'll just do that as well. Jamming my brush in there. This guy, I'm gonna do, we gotta finish his, his kind of tunic that comes out the bottom here. He's got a big, thick kind of fur belt. I also, um, there's not really any, necessarily any reference. I guess there is some, if I looked for berserkers or barbarians in the, in the, play, in the player's handbook or their monster manual, but instead, I just have the blister pack from WizKids beside me here for reference on different areas of the body. If they're not clear, I can just reference 
the back of the blister and it can tell me what belongs to what if I can if I can't kind of tell from first glance I'm also going to do his boots as well because they're separated from his from his pants what I'm doing also folks is I'm making sure that areas that touch each other are different colors and that's really important you can see I'm blocking I'm going from head to toe and I'm kind of figuring out okay you know what his pants uh provide some delineation between his boots and his and his tunic so I'll do that um and then that way from a distance from a distance I don't know why I did that that's it's not cool um from you know a foot away from the table I can tell what is what uh, I think I'm gonna keep his I'm gonna keep, uh, yeah I'm just gonna keep his gloves a different color maybe you know what no I'm not they're going brown too this guy's gonna have a lot of leather on him a lot of dark leather and like I said they're all the same miniature but with these subtleties it'll just look a little bit better on the table and not so uniform um, and barbarians, I don't imagine that they coordinate all that much. Probably not too worried about it, especially because I'm using them for berserkers. So I'm not too concerned about them being coordinated from a fashion perspective, if you know what I mean. Is it possible to paint on animal print, or does it work not work out? Yes, it, is. it does, absolutely. Um, if you watch our uh, wyvern tutorial, I absolutely painted um, stripes on the back of the wyvern. That worked really well. Um, so yes, absolutely, you can paint. Uh, uh, paint. Like if I had, if this was kind of like a, a tiger, you can do tiger stripes. I've done prints on a, a bunch of different um, minis, um, especially dragons and such. And that's the thing about dragons, actually. A good point about dragons is that um, some of the kind of metallic colors are very, very similar in color across the board. So um, you want to make sure um, that um, you want to make sure uh, that you di differentiate another way because you know a brass dragon could look like a gold dragon could look like a bronze dragon um, and so you could look like a gold dragon <laughs> so you want to uh, add some markings on it that are typical for that type of creature that would help kind of to um, differentiate it this gentleman is going to be a, a darker gentleman so I am going to paint his skin heavy sienna so I can build up skin tones from there. Um, this limits what I can do a little bit uh, around the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and make his pants dark as well. And then I can build up those highlights, especially on his skin with some of the lighter brown colors that I have. Speaking of, I'm currently painting the brass dragon my final dragon till the red, gold, and silver ones come out in March. <laughs> Speaking of red ones, we've got some, we've got some treats for you guys. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh dear. Hello, Bruno. Bruno the tavern dog just woke up. Apparently, I think he was having a dream of some sort. Hilarious. Okay, so that is that. I'm going to leave that kind of a dark color. That is heavy sienna, folks. I've put heavy sienna on everything that I wanted to at that point. Uh, I'm actually going to come in here, um, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to make one of these gentlemen dark-skinned as well. Um, you know what? This guy has a, already has... So I'm going to make him the dark-skinned gentleman. And then varying skin tones also helps to differentiate multiple miniatures of the same type on the table. So that is what we'll do there. Perfect. Hello, Realm Smith Melanie. Mel is on the chat as well. She plays Callie in our live stream. Everyone say hello to Mel. Wow, lots and lots of viewers today. Did you watch your Christmas? Uh, let me see. Melanie, I did. Did you? 
metal guy's butt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, question, is it possible to paint? No, I already read that. Speaking of, I'm currently painting Brass Dragon. Cool. No further questions. I'm just going to go over to Facebook here to see if there's any questions there. Um, yes, the Wolf Hunting Brothers is exactly what I'm talking about with no spoilers. Steve, I had a feeling that's... Um, how will everyone what are you painting today? And yes, so cool. All right. Perfect. All right. Okay, Whew. that was, man, it's already 5.30. We just painted Heavy Sienna. Um, we're going to go through now and paint. Let's see. The majority of the colors that are kind of... I'm going to do all the heavy brown areas. Um, I think I'm going to do his belt um, Heavy Sienna as well, actually. I wanted to come back and do that. So I'm just going to make his belt and all his pouches around his waist here. Heavy Sienna as well. Where the hell is that? Sirenscape's so good. And if Sirenscape's too loud, folks, or it's distracting, uh, let me know. If it doesn't bother you, uh, can we get a look at your pally? Yes, absolutely, you can get a look. It is a disaster. I was painting some things yesterday uh, for the good friend, our good friends at WizKids in Vallejo, which you guys will see in the future. Um, it is a mess, but yes, you can absolutely take a look at my palette, which is a disaster. I was trying to clean it up a bit earlier, um, but yeah. Um, another question, what type of protective coatings do you use after finishing the mini painting? Uh, I spray them with a Vallejo a matte varnish. Um, just real quick, on all sides, you can use your airbrush to use the uh, Game Air stuff, or you can use the rattle cans that Vallejo has now. They're awesome. But a quick matte varnish spray will keep them nice and protected at your tabletop so uh, all your players' grubby hands don't mess them up. <laughs> okay. Um, I forgot my heavy brown. That is not good. One second. I'm going to get my son to grab it. That helps uh, to have a son who can just run and grab me a, a paint color. What's that? Yeah, from the rack, bud. Okay, uh, I will wait on Heavy Brown until he comes over with it. Um, we can do a couple different colors here, right? So we have, I'm gonna do this bear skin in kind of a lighter color, almost like a... Um, Kodiak or like, a, oh, thank you for the follow. Um, and then I'll do the other one in a, in a light brown and that one would be really light brown if that makes sense or like a, almost a cream. Not quite a polar bear color, but it's on the right, son. Okay. Thank you. Say hi, you wanna say hi to everybody? Sure. Say hi to the internet. Oh, you just hit my camera. Oh, <laughs> it's okay, we were trying to, to do, hey, anyway, say hi to everybody. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> Thank you very much. What? Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Beige. Beige is a good call. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Heavy brown. Now, heavy brown color is another extra opaque paint from Vallejo. That is what we're using next, and that is going to be a great base coat for a bunch of other things. We are gonna start with this largest area on this miniature, which is the brown, the bare skin. Now, actually, I'm now wondering if I should have done the other one. I'm gonna do the other one because this one's right against the, the leather and that's not gonna work. And actually the dark skin is gonna provide a really cool, um, and provide a really cool contrast against the against the lighter bear pelt. So for this, I'm going to use the the heavy brown. Now here, 
we've already laid down all of that heavy sienna quite carefully, not quite carefully, just liberally. But now when we get close to that heavy sienna with this heavy brown, we want to just be careful that we don't overbrush it too much and mess up all those areas that we just base coated. Not a huge deal because those paints are obviously still wet in our palette. But yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And this heavy brown color is really nice. With some sepia wash on that, it's gonna look killer. I'm very excited for tomorrow's session episode of Into the Mist. Last session, what happened at the end of last session? Uh, they were in, um, and it's not really a spoiler. So for those of you that still want to watch the last episode, tune out for the next five minutes or so, or turn off your volume, just mute the volume. Uh, but last session, the players were in a haunted house. It's called Death House from Chris Estrade. And they met some ghost children. It was super creepy. They fought a suit of animated armor um, and a specter who was previously the nursemaid of the house. Um, so it was super creepy, super awesome. And then uh, they made their way into the area under the house, the basement, where they were told there was a monster locked up. And uh, now they are in what appears to be the catacombs for the home of the family crypt. So that should get interesting to tomorrow night's episode. I'm really enjoying running Curse of Strahd. We have an announcement regarding Gary Khan and our show tomorrow night. So tune in tomorrow night to find out what will be happening at Gary Con for Into the Mist. And I just also want to thank everyone who's been watching it and just loving it. We're getting so many positive, positive um, reactions and reviews and comments and people just saying how much they're enjoying watching the show. So I want to thank everyone who uh, supports us and who's been watching it and just loving it. It means a lot to us to have you guys kind of tune in every week and and then to hear that you're really enjoying the cast and and the, the story and all that really means a lot so thank you to everyone for that um trying to get all of the belt under here again i'm trying to add delineation folks to between the belt area and the tunic and the pants with limited colors. So we're doing some magic here to try and make it all work out. Okay, so that so that guy is pretty much, most of his skin, is, or most of his clothing, I should say, is base coated at that point. Um, this one we'll come back to. Um, we were doing his, his bare cloak, but we're not gonna do that now. We're just gonna come in instead and do his tunic, and then his cloak can be kind of that light color that we were planning. Being careful not to get his dark skin because that's already been base coated and we're still using heavy brown for all of that as well. Um, is there anyone watching who's going to be at GaryCon? Who's actually going to be at the show? And we'll get to say hi to. Please sound off and let me know. Yes, <laughs> Joel's overly done French accent is outstanding. And yes, Mel killed a suit of, well, finished off a suit of animated armor. Um, 
Roan 17 damage he did to it. I think it was force damage too. I think uh, probably hurt it a little, but Mel completely finished it off in true stunning rogue fashion. And it was for her first kill. I think that was actually the first kill period in the whole stream it was the animated suit of armor, which are always fun. These miniatures can also, of course, be used as PC mini minis. We painted all the PCs for, and that is player character. For those of you that might be new to Dungeons and Dragons, uh, all our player character minis are um, WizKids minis that we painted on the show, actually. Except for Falfer, we still have to, just waiting for a new halfling miniature to arrive so that I can, so I can paint him as well. But I'm gonna paint the boots. Also, this heavy brown. Now, it all looks kind of like the same tones and stuff, but once we really get into it, um, and once we start adding washes and highlights and stuff, hopefully the differentiation will help to break up some of these areas. I forgot, I still have leather brown too, which is a different tone. I forgot about that. That is a good point, Jason. Yes, I talk to myself quite often when I paint. I'm gonna stop on this because that leather brown will do the work and be a slightly different tone to this. Um, I don't have to paint everything leather brown. But this guy's fur on his shoulders is gonna be heavy brown, I think. No, that is gonna be the light um, no, that is going to be the light color again because he has dark skin, so we want that contrast. So I'm going to come through and I'm getting beeps and dings here. Just going back to Facebook here just to see, make sure I didn't miss any questions. Thanks, Ed Tortuga. Ed Tortuga says it's always inspiring to watch me paint. I really appreciate that. It's just a lot of fun. You gotta enjoy it. Again, I'm gonna do the bottom of the tunic here that's kind of poking out under this leather in this heavy brown color. You can probably hear Bruno's paws. He's coming to say hi. Hi, Bruno. Don't go in there. Um, it's peeking out from under here, and then the rest is kind of like almost like a fur, so we'll do that a different color after. But that is that. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do, that heavy brown on that character. Um, we still have this other kind of chieftain or high-level barbarian. Um, for him, I'm definitely going to do this heavy brown on his tunic as well because his um, cloak and his skin are... Well, his skin is um, Caucasian and... Um, and his gloves are kind of a, a dark color, so we're just going to go through here and make his tunic heavy brown. Thanks, so snap that for tuning in again. Appreciate it. There we go. You can hear Bruno just chewing on his paws or something over there. 
apologize for that. It's not the it's not the sound set. Although that would be a good sound for Sirenscape. I think that's all I'm gonna do. Heavy brown on that one. Uh, this dude here. Um, pants are gonna be heavy brown. Oh, Bruno, the sounds you make. Sounds like a ghoul is devouring some poor, poor soul. Okay, so that is a heavy brown on the pants. Um, I'm going to use the heavy le uh, the, the leather for something else there. Um, actually, I might go ahead. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'll use heavy brown here on the belt area. I mean, whoops. Thankfully, WizKids minis are built strong to last. And of course, they come pre-painted. Uh, pre-primed, sorry, pre-painted. They do come pre-painted, some of them, in blisters. But no, these come pre-primed, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, spraying them or anything. Okay, and then this guy, his tunic is going to need to be that heavy brown color. And he's got a strap across his chest I'll have to deal with later. I do have a, um, a parasite brown that I was going to use for um, highlights on the heavy sienna, but I can also use that for for some of these brown areas as well, just to give some differentiation in the brown shades. Okay. Let's change up Sirenscape a little bit here. Let's add, this is the characters exploring the house. Hopefully none of you have flashbacks from last episode. I know it was terrifying for some, according to the comments. <laughs> some people were even saying, I'm just going to turn off the volume for a little bit <laughs> when they saw the children, the, the ghost children. It was great. Okay, so heavy brown, heavy brown, check. Heavy brown, check, 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 and check. Okay, I'm going to go through now, do Parasite, and the idea, the reason I'm doing this is so that I can block all the main colors in and then do washes across all the minis. Um, and here is the Parasite brown color. This is just another color from the game color line. Uh, All right, um, let's see. I think I'm gonna do some like that. So I'll just give him, his strap will be kind of that light brown and um, what else? I think I'm gonna save the leather brown for those other areas. I think it's a slightly different color, so. Um, All of his his mid bet belt area. I'm gonna do this kind of parasite brown, but with, when I add a wash to it, it's gonna look super cool. So I'm just making sure I hit all of the areas around his waist. Um, can't forget the strap of the belt that comes down there. Okay. Anything here? I'm going to do his whole belt. This parasite brown color. You know what? I'm going to switch to a smaller brush because this area is a bit small. Switch to my zero. Just so I'm doing less cleanup after. Okay. 
we go. Again, for those of you that have just tuned in, make sure that you follow D and D on their Twitch channel as well as Realm Smith on our Twitch. And if you follow Realm Smith, this little potion bottle will will glow purple as it has a number of times during this during this time already. Um, there we go. And then also, um, a reminder um, to check out our Instagram, because we post a lot of our pictures from the minis that we paint on our Instagram as well. Um, and that is at, it's Realm Smith TV, as well as on Twitter and on Facebook. We're on all of the socials, so you can check us out on all the socials. We'll, we are Realm Smith TV, and um, on Twitch and YouTube, we are Realm Smith. I'm zoning. I'm, zo I'm in the zone here. I remember that I'm got people on the other end. Okay, it's just so cathartic and therapeutic. Okay. Um, that guy's got a little bit. This guy doesn't have any yet. Um, I think I'm going to do his belts too. In this color here. Wow, this guy I missed a bunch of stuff. Um, I gotta kind of be careful. The nice thing is, is when you're thank you for the follow, I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Um, the nice thing is, is when you're doing, when you're doing these, the washes that you use will do, go a long way to um, delineate certain areas as well because they seep into the recesses between colors. And they, um, they will delineate an area for sure. There we go. So make sure that you use washes to do that. Make sure that you go right into the recess between colors because it will really help to kind of differentiate them. Okay, last coat I'm going to use, I think, base coat is this leather brown. It's a slightly different tone from the heavy brown, and hopefully that'll give just some more um, contrast between colors. Go in here. I think for this guy, I have to do his gloves. You can see it's a bit more on the orange-yellow side, a bit warmer than that brown color. Um, Again, we're just using a bunch of different shades of brown to add interest to the miniature. And then we can even add different washes to different areas, and that will also do the same. What time is it? How are we doing? 5.53, an hour to go. Oh, man. Craziness. Crazy. Okay. There we go. Base coating is the longest, does take the longest, the longest process, um, usually. This guy, I'm going to have a, what color do I want his? I think he's going to be light colored. He's going to have a lighter, lighter color, I think. Yeah. Also going to do lighter color around his waist as well. So that is all he needs for this leather brown color. Actually, you know what? I am going to make his hair on the blonde side. So I'll have one blonde, one really dark hair, and one redhead. Okay, there we go. That guy is done when it comes to a leather brown. This guy... What do we want to do here? His pants. And you can see that there's a slight color difference, which is what we were going for. It's important. Between his pants and his tunic, it's not a huge difference, but it's just enough. And then with the wash that we use, it will really kind of set those two colors apart. Like that. 
uh, he is going to have a lighter a lighter uh, cloak so we set him apart he is done uh, with the leather brown have a uh, question having second thoughts about trying six minis <laughs> yes yes I am currently having second thoughts about trying six minis but but I have faith I have faith Again, they're speed painting. Um, they're not going to win any awards. Um, that isn't the intent. The intent for this is to put six more creatures that I can throw at the players in an, a random encounter. One um, d six more uh, berserkers is what I'm going through here, going for here. Now, if this was a, a player character miniature, I'd probably take the entire episode. To paint, or you know, I paint that and maybe one other one. Um, but for this case, it is a it is a random encounter, and so I'm giving it the value for paint that I need it to be in my game. If that makes sense, uh, this guy already has lots of stuff, different colors. I am not worried about it. I am just going to leave it now. His brown cloak. I missed a whole. Side. That is another thing, especially when you're speed painting, folks. Um, you'll, you know, come back to it and be painting, ready to paint an area. You'll be like, I totally forgot to base paint that entire area like I did for the, for the right side of that bear head. Man, how did I miss that? Anyways. On this guy, go back to that leather brown. Um, boots for sure. And this is all patchwork and fur and and uh, animal skin leather and so on. So, you know, this berserker wouldn't be too concerned about matching and color coordinating. Um, yeah, I might make his the fur down there a different a different color. That'd be cool. Okay. And then lastly. I don't think I need this guy to be anything to be leather brown. All right, done. Okay. Now, I'm going to put base paint, base coat to the lighter color. I'm going to use bone white for the lighter fur. And then we'll go across each miniature and do some washes. And that'll add contrast to that. And then we'll highlight different things. So for this one, I'm just going to go with this bone white all over, cover over this heavy brown that I did on the one accidentally. Question, what colors do you use the most? Uh, heavy Sienna almost on every single miniature I paint. Uh, it's a great base color. That's kind of one of my go-tos. Um, and I go through a lot of heavy Sienna. And by a lot, I mean... It's it's incredible how long a bottle of Vallejo paint lasts. It's in dropper bottles, so you're only putting enough in your palette for, you know, for one area of a tiny miniature. So for the most part, um, you know, I'm going through, geez, I don't even know if I've gone through two bottles of Heavy Sienna in the last three months. I don't even know. Anyways, or six months even, but... Um, Heavy Sienna is one I use all the time. Uh, another one is uh, the Sepia Wash. That is my favorite wash in the Vallejo line. I use it for so many different things, and it just looks so cool. We're going to use some of that tonight, actually, on the, over the color I'm painting right now. Uh, and Black Wash, of course. And then Gunmetal right now is my favorite metallic color. I use it as a base for most of my weapons. If I'm not coming back and doing a lot of highlights on them, I'm definitely going to use that because it's kind of like a mid-tone to dark color. Um, but yeah, that's that's typically what I what I use the most. Um, Trying not to get his his head here. Um, oh, I forgot the gloves on this one, so I think I am going to go back and use some leather brown on the gloves. I don't know how. Again, don't know how I missed that. 
but you'll catch that. You come around, and that's why I like to, especially when I'm batch painting, I like to um, base coat the entire model first before I move on to anything else, just because it helps me to know which colors I've mixed, missed, and then literally I just have to dip into my uh, palette where the paints are still wet uh, and, and just add that base coat color. There, okay, then that, that is done. And you can see that the light color, oh, my camera is, slowing down here, all good? You guys still got me out there? Huh. Just make sure that everybody can still see me out there. It looked like it, it was a little jumpy at first, but I just had to, Reset the camera. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can see that the light color is going to contrast nicely against the darker skin on that one. So that is what I'm going to use for that. Um, questions here. New to D&D and minis. Um, yes, Vallejo does make their own washes. They make their own basically anything that you would want. Um, uh, varnishes, washes, airbrush paints, uh, heavy base paints. Uh, auxiliary colors, so like uh, special effects, environment effects, they've got it all. Uh, new to D&D minis, and I want to start painting. Do I need to buy a compressor and an airbrush to paint prime minis? Do you need to prime Nolzers minis for, at all? No. So I do not prime Nolzers minis at all. I paint them directly out of the package. Um, they come pre-primed, and you don't have to worry about that at all. So that's one thing. Um, I would not buy an airbrush and a compressor just for the sake of ba uh, priming. Um, if you're going to actually do some airbrushing, um, I have an airbrush, but I use it for uh, object source lighting and glow effects and that kind of stuff. Or if it's a large miniature, I use it for some shading. But uh, I, I rarely use my airbrush uh, unless for special cases. So if you um, are painting a miniature that requires priming, uh, other than the Nolzers line, I would suggest that you just get a rattle can of primer. Uh, the Vallejo primers are great. They just came up with a bunch of colored primers, and you can you can use that. And I just painted onto his face, which I didn't want to do. But but you can see again with the dark skin color, that lighter color really shows through, and is going to look cool. Um, actually, now that I'm on this miniature, I'm also going to go through, and I'm going to paint all of the fur that line all the areas here. Um, of the armor. So there's you got fur around his bracers and around his boots. So I'm just going to go through and base coat all of that as well with bone white. I'm using bone white now for all of that. There we go. Perfect. I'm also seeing areas that I missed, but I don't have time to stop because, again, the, this exercise. And it's good to, to kind of challenge yourself to do some speed painting every once in a while because you'll learn techniques of how to, like, cut corners and, and, and uh, you know, how to do things quickly. And, like I said, batch painting and all that sort of stuff, it, it really hones your skill and helps you to get quicker in general. Um, and the more you paint, the quicker you'll go. And is cramping up. <laughs> any ever had any issues with the Nozers primer? Do you rinse or wash the minis? I don't. Don't rinse them. I literally crack it open, paint it right out of the right out of the box. Um, the only issue sometimes that I'm, that I find is because they've been primed a while and they're in the box. Sometimes the paint rubs off really easily. You can see I was handling the top of his head and the paint. I don't want that paint there, so it really doesn't matter to me. But it did. Um, come off a little bit. So you do have to be careful. Use a mini holder if you can um, on areas that you don't want the, the, the paint to, to rub off. Uh, that's kind of important um, in some cases. So, all right. So that is, he has lighter fur on top. 
this guy is also going to have, because I think I've painted everything dark that I wanted to, so this guy is going to have lighter fur on top and on the bottom here. Uh, like that. Perfect. So I am just going through with a lighter color now, and, and this should really start to make the miniature look like it's getting somewhere. Um, once that base coating is starts to get, get complete, it really starts to um, feel good. Uh, it's the washing stage for me that's one of my favorites. I love the finishing stage, obviously all the effects and stuff. Um, the base coating is a little bit daunting for me, and it's kind of a means to an end. Just something you kind of just got to do to get to where you want to go. Uh, fur on the back. I'll use a larger brush for that in a second as soon as I've done all the fur around lining around his armor in a lot of cases for these miniatures i'm probably not going to do a lot of highlighting i'll probably just oh i'll probably just dry brush um some of them other areas will look just fine just with a wash and if this was a pc mini i'd be like highlighting every fold and but i'm not worried about that again i'm just just want to get miniatures onto the table just want to get encounters set against my players. Creaking floor is pretty creepy. My sirenscape. How did you remove the prime off the mini? Oh, that was a question for somebody else, not for myself. Question, having second thought. Oh, we already asked that. How about having second thoughts? That's funny. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Wow, tons of viewers on d and I think we've, we've hit a record even on over Nosers. Wow, guys, thank you for tuning in. That's awesome. Maybe not. This is definitely a, a, a record uh, viewership for Nolzers, so. So welcome, everyone. And again, I mean, there are a lot of people that are like, oh, I want to practice. I don't want to paint my minis until I'm good enough. And, you know, that will always be a fear. And my suggestion is just go in and paint. If you want to wait maybe a little bit on some of your your kind of the minis that are more important to you or the, the, the kind of um, centerpiece minis or large baddies or PC minis, that's fine. But there's never going to be a time where you're happy enough to paint, to start painting. And I would just say, just jump in, jump in and try it. That's, uh, that's my, it's always my advice to people who are starting to paint is if you just jump in and try it, you'll find how by following certain techniques, we do we do master classes at a bunch of shows. We're doing one at GaryCon. Uh, we just did them at PAX Unplugged. And it's amazing how, you know, I'll have people who've been painting for many years, 20 years, some, some of them, um, and people who just paint their first mini ever. And it's incredible that after our class, how similar uh, those miniatures are, how very close um, they all are. And that's just because everybody kind of followed the same techniques and learn the same techniques and you get really similar results so i would say you know find a tutorial about the the, the mini that you want to paint so that you have the colors suggestions and and some of the techniques that you that you need and then and then just go to it
I'm painting all the fur lining the same just because it's a little easier that way um, and it adds the most delineation because it's such a light color. Oh man, I'm getting there. What time is it? Oh, 6.10. Man, I gotta take a break on these challenges next time around. Do something easy. I've been doing multiple minis for a while. I'd like to just focus on one miniature for the episode, I think, next time. That would be fun. Again, also, folks, if you have uh, Nolzer's miniatures that you'd want us to paint, uh, things that you have on your table that you're about to do, and you'd like some, some tips or some ideas uh, that you'd like us to tackle next, please let me know. Uh, we take all of those suggestions at, to heart and, um, and end up choosing from the suggestions that, we, that people give us on these shows. So be sure to, to kind of speak up and sound off in the chat. Uh, have you tried to uh, Vallejo shifters, color changing paints? Uh, I we were selling them at um, at PAX. I have not had the opportunity yet to try them. Very excited about it. Um, Vallejo did a really wonderful thing in the community recently. For those of you that followed it, um, and uh, I looked out for one of their one of their community members, and so it was. They're a great company. Um, can't say enough about them. Alex is a good guy. Uh, who, Alex Vallejo himself, who was the son of the people who created the company. Still family run out of Spain. All of that wonderful stuff. So I would check out all that stuff at your local game store. Okay, so for this, these guys actually don't have a lot of... Um, they don't have a lot of fur lining on stuff. So... Oh, I missed color here, so heavy brown. Just gonna come back in and paint that there. I'm sure when I come in with the skin tone, that's when I'm gonna see a lot of the kind of areas that I missed. Um, now again, it's rough, folks. Like these are pretty messy up close, but they will do for what we want. Uh, I am going to go ahead now and I'm going to start to add some washes. I'm going to go black washes and sepia washes. I'm probably going to start with um, sepia because it will, if it bleeds, it's not a, a huge deal. And then we can paint and, and uh, dry brush some of this stuff. I would adore to see a beholder painted like the one on the 5e core books. Yuka, you're in luck. We have a four-part series on how to paint a beholder exactly as it appears on the cover of the monster manual um, with the firelight from one side and the lightning from the other side so please check out uh, uh, youtube.com slash realmsmith for that three part or four part uh, tutorial and you can uh, check that out helmed horror oh that's a good one I like that I like that question do you go to cons and paint yes so uh, D Nicole we go to a lot of cons and paint um, we do a cup one every other month or so. Um, so definitely, whatever con you're at, check to see. We're usually there. Um, we go to Pax Unplugged. We go to Origins. We're going to be at Gary Con. Um, there are others. Why can't I think of others that we go to? Um, but we do a bunch of shows per year, and we're upping that as we go every year. So um, definitely, if you're at a con, check the event schedule and see if we're there. Now, you can see washes. This is the best use of washes or one of them is to use it on fur. You can see I added that bone white and now just adding a sepia wash to that will do really great things for that texture. As I kind of go through here and add that color. Now it still maintains it. Now. There's so many different ways to use washes. For those of you that have never used washes before or are new to painting, uh, washes are intended to add contrast and shadow to a miniature. Uh, basically what happens is you, you brush the wash onto your miniature and it will seep into the recesses, adding a natural shadow so you don't have to like do that through paint, uh, if that makes sense, uh, or work it out through paint. I'm also going to use this sepia on 
some of the heavy brown and leather areas so that will give them some shadow. It really brings out the detail when you do this. And you can see how all of a sudden that fur starts to come to life. And we are going to use this across all of the lighter brown areas on this mini. I'm not necessarily slathering it on, but I am putting a generous amount in and then letting it do the work it's supposed to do. Onto the gauntlets. And then we're going to use black wash on all of the darker brown areas and on the skin that is darker as well. But that already is starting to do some of the work that we need it to do. I had asked if any uh, I had asked if anybody was going to be at Garycom this year. I'd love to I don't know if I saw that anybody was. I'm trying to focus on, on painting as well. But if, if anybody's going to be at GaryCon, please sound off. Let us know. I'd love to say hi. And then make sure you, you check out the event schedule so that you can come paint with us live at GaryCon. Ink and Ignorance. Good to see you. He painted. Uh, painted with me, actually, guest painted on one of our streams from PAX, one of our classes from PAX that we then aired. And I don't even know if you know that. We aired our session uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think. I don't know what episode it was, but it's on the internet, on the interweb somewhere. Well, I know where it is. It's on our YouTube page, but. I'm also going to use the sepia wash on the little area, little um, fur that lines all of the armor. And I'm using it on the tunic here as well. Oops. Okay, um, I got a big question here. I have a lot of minis to paint. I want to get a good set of them. So basically I need one. I want to purchase a big quantity of one item one time. I am going to go with Vallejo, so just need to know what colors I should definitely get. Also would love to see you do the Pit Devil. Oh, cool. Um, yes, what you should get. I would get the game color line. If you're going to do the full range, I would do the full game color range or the basic range, but that will give you all of the game color colors that you need. They also have a model color range, but that's more for like historical gaming and, and things like that. So I would focus specifically on the um, on the game color range of paint from Vallejo for fantasy um, uh, for fantasy miniatures, and they have a bunch of kits uh, that you can order if you go to your local game store and ask them for the Vallejo catalog, um, or they can go through their ordering system based uh, depending on what distributor they use. You can order um, a variety of sets for your painting needs. Um, Vallejo also a while ago and uh, announced at Gamma Trade Show last year that we are, I say we, <laughs> that they are releasing a um, WizKids paint line. Uh, and they are, they are teaming up with Vallejo to do a WizKids paint line that is specifically curated um, for the Nolzers and WizKids miniatures. Um, I know that because I am the one that curated it for them and I'm designing their boxes and doing all the tutorials in the boxes as well. So um, that will be coming out. I don't know when, but it's, it, we're showing it at shows in the next um, couple months. And then I think, I, don't, I can't make any promises. But basically, uh, I'm not sure about the release schedules, but keep an eye out for the WizKids line of Vallejo paints at your local game store. Um, you've probably heard that here first. And uh, it's a very exciting, exciting thing. So, ba 
but yeah, keep an eye out for that because it's so fun and Vallejo and WizKids are great partners to have and, and are, have been aligned with each other for some time now and they do really great things together. So and they're wonderful partners and sponsors of ours. Okay. And the colors in that paint set, actually, just so you know, are um, taken from the normal Vallejo line. They'll be uh, half bottles, so smaller, smaller bottles. Um, these are uh, 17 mils. Those will be half that size. Um, and um, for that reason, uh, the, the reason that the same colors, even the same names, is so that, you know, if you go through that half bottle and you want more, more of that color, um, you can just go to the Vallejo rack and grab a full-size bottle of that color, depending. So that's kind of the intention there. Um, and, yeah, we're super excited about it, so keep an eye out. Okay. These washes are doing all right. I think I'm also going to use CPO wash on this big brown cloak as well. Just because it's going to be a bit of a lighter color. There we go. That floor creak. Mel kept saying it sounded like a burp. Or like somebody had a owlbear taco burrito for lunch and decided to go adventuring right after. You know, aren't you supposed to rest like 30 minutes or an hour or 45 minutes or whatever it is before adventuring after eating a owlbear burrito? Sorry, I know there are owlbear fans out there. And forgive me. Yes, the extra opaque paints are really, really great. They're and they're very awesome, and they are featured in the new WizKids paint line that's coming. So, and they are ridiculously awesome to use. That's for sure. Okay. That is all of the sepia wash, and you can see already that it's starting to dry on that cloak, and you can see that it is really bringing out that texture. Um, right now, they just look like big kind of nuggets of brown color, <laughs> lots of earth tones, uh, little variations in between, but that hopefully will change once we start to add some of the black wash, which I'm going to do now, and when we... This is the Vallejo black wash. Uh, and when we start to dry brush some of the areas as well. And add the skin tones. Yes, very nice. Question. Many YouTube uh, tutorials use Citadel Army Painter, etc. Do you find that conver conversion tables, I prefer Vallejo, are relatively accurate? Uh, yeah, for the most part, you can find the decent conversion tables for sure to Vallejo. Um, they... Um, yeah, I just realized when I said brown nuggets, that was weird. Um, they uh, they absolutely, for the most part, you can find a decent conversion table for most. Um, the paints obviously aren't identical uh, from a color perspective, but but you can usually find what you need when you need it and a fairly close comparison uh, to most things. I'm going to use this black wash, like I said, on the dark skin as well. Um, I'm not sure what color I'm going to do his hair just yet, but... Maybe I'll do, like, red hair. That'd be cool. Like, red hair with dark skin. That'd be awesome. Wild. I mean, it is a fantasy world, right? Okay. I'm just going just gonna to drop the miniatures is what I'm going to do. And you can see how the black wash here is doing crazy things to, to differentiate the areas as well. So it is bringing some shadow into some areas. And I'm painting it right up to the seam, if that makes sense, where two colors meet. Uh, I'm also going to do the hafts with my black wash. And this is going to add that delineation and that contrast that is much needed on these miniatures. That's one. I am hoping that they look 
different enough from each other here. Questions. Greeting from Gilbert, Arizona. Welcome, Ben Buddy. Do you paint much terrain or smaller terrain pieces like chests, crates, etc.? Yes, I do. Um, the Whiz Kids line has a ton of awesome things like that, all pre-primed. Uh, paint lots of terrain, and I use Vallejo for it. Um, you know, I know people say, "Oh, it's a little too expensive," but it's amazing how much a, a bottle, how far a bottle of Vallejo goes. Uh, and um, don't be afraid to to use your Vallejo for for terrain. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, we paint uh, terrain quite often. Uh, we've done some some terrain tutorials as well, and you can find those on our YouTube page. Um, from time to time, but those are like custom, custom kind of terrain tutorials, but yeah. Going through this black wash, uh, not, not through the amount of it, I'm just saying like we're getting it done fairly quickly here. What time is it? 6.26, 30 minutes to go, feeling the clock here. Getting there. I probably should have done gunmetal first because then I could have washed it all. See, as you're, as you're kind of speed painting something sometimes you realize oh i sh totally should have done that f first before that and that would have saved me some time um, that's what i'm dealing with right now diluting my paints just a touch i do that all the time just um just so that they flow nice uh guaranteed to flow a little nicer I, just a dab of, of water these are all acrylic paints water-based paints so water do does just fine A lot of people use a medium. I know that Vallejo has medium, fresh medium, but for the most part, I just use water, and it's totally cool. All right, so that is how they are looking. Creepy piano. Do you guys want to hear the really creepy child music that we used. It's not going to freak anybody out and make people not watch my video because I'm kind of proud <laughs> that we put it all together. Of course, it's all from Sirenscape, existing Sirenscape sound sets, but it's really awesome. Anybody want to hear it? If I get like five yeses. Yuka says he sub to, or they, I don't know if it's a he, uh, they sub to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Great way to spend the time with the kids. Um, that's one yes. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, tons of yeses. Okay, all right, <laughs> we're in. Um, I just got a quick question regarding umber wash versus sepia wash, um, and when do you when to ch choose between those two? I use a uh, sepia wash when I want something to be a bit warmer. So, uh, or ancient or antiqued. So if it's, if it's clothing or a, uh, if it's like white clothing or a scroll, um, or I want the skin to be a bit warmer, a bit more on the yellow side, I will use sepia. Uh, I will use umber wash when it's something a bit more earthy. So if I want the brown to be, or the color to be a bit darker, a bit more dirty, um, then I would use, I would go ahead and use the umber wash um, because it's a bit earthier. It's not as warm as the sepia, if that makes sense. So typically natural occurring things, I typically use an umber wash and sepia I typically use on, um, yeah, things that I want to kind of pop a bit more and not be as natural in tone and color. Um, black wash over this dark brown does such wonderful things. I love how it works over heavy sienna. Okay, as soon as I'm done the black wash on this, I'm going to play you guys some creepy creepy ghost kid sound set stuff on Sirenscape that we used last week. And you can see when I use a sepia wash, it actually brought a lot of these kind of lighter browns around the heavy sienna and made them darker, so it kind of all bled together. But now that I'm adding the black wash to that heavy sienna, it's taking it a kind of level darker as well. Um, and then we'll bring it all back up with some, some highlights. Okay, so that is that. 
And okay, right now. Creepy kid music. Here we go. Are you ready? It's it's scary. Here we go. It's so good. Can you use Vallejo paints and things on old school lead minis? Like, yeah, totally. You can totally use a Vallejo, but you will have to prime first using a primer. Um, again, I use a Vallejo primer um, for that. Let us all just take a moment and enjoy the creepy children's music that made my players almost pee their pants last Monday. <laughs> Bruno doesn't like that. He's like, come on, this happened last time. Where he heard, <laughs> where he heard the kids singing. Oh, I don't know, my doorbell's going off and it might be, it might be an, oh, maybe that's why he's, okay, maybe it's not the kids. I blame the kids, but maybe it's not. There we go. Okay, black wash there. I think it might be a Amazon delivery. I am not gonna worry about it. And then, so they walked into the children's room, we played that, and then we played this. When the children appeared. Okay, I have half an hour left. Uh, I'm gonna let that wash for a sec. You guys can listen to this creepy music for two seconds. I'm just gonna check my door and I'll be right back. You're so excited. And yes, it was my delivery. Oh, <laughs> this music's so creepy, it's great. Okay. Uh, Gunmetal, that's what I'm gonna do next. It's what I use for to base most of my weapons. It's kind of a good mid-tone metallic. And it is from the game color line. Bruno's still going nuts. He's like, there's creepy children at the door. Dad. And with these metallics, because they're metal, they actually have little fine flakes of metal in them. Uh, so they tend to be uh, fairly viscous. So I like to dilute these as well a little bit so that they're gonna flow well on the miniature. That was a bit maybe too much dilution, too much water there, but there we go. So I'm gonna paint that. I'm also gonna paint his buckle. He's got a big old, big old belt buckle and he's got a morning star on his belt. There. Um, he's got a little dagger. Use a little brush for that. The hilt and the pommel and the cross guard there. There we go. Paint the little rivets on his shoulder pads. And just drop him again. Why not? Pick him up by his axe that I just painted. Why not, right? The things we do. Okay, so this is how he's looking. He is looking all right. And now just gotta go through and batch paint all of these axes. And some of the other little details. 
adventure. 25 minutes. Anybody done with the creepy music yet? To check out Sirenscape for your own creepiness, you guys can go to sirenscape.com. Because it's awesome. The player is free, and a lot of the sounds that I'm using, I create all these sound sets myself uh, using the, the the creator that they have available. And um, a lot of it is from the Witchwood sound set, which is one of the free ones that they offer if you want to play around with it. Go. Big old belt buckle again. Yeah, there's lots of stuff on our YouTube, Yuka. Lots of lots of goodies to enjoy. Yes, from speed painting from afar, they don't look too bad. Um they are a little rough, and I'm sure after they dry, I'm going to see all kinds of little areas of primer. But again, remember, these, these minis, you're going to see them from, you know, a foot or two away. So um, you don't have to worry too much about them looking incredible. And I only have 25 minutes to finish these, so... But these little challenges like this, like I said, just help to hone, hone your skill, teach you to go fast, you know, maybe choose a couple minis that you just want to bang out really quick that don't mean all that much necessarily in your campaign, but are quick encounters, some spiders or some rats or something like that, just to kind of challenge yourself to go fast. And what you'll find is you'll find that you'll have, you'll paint a lot faster for your good minis. Even the ones that you take your time on, you'll just get more confident with your brush strokes. It's just a cool little exercise to get faster and better and more efficient as a painter. Those axes are done. Then we have the axe heads on these guys. Yes, <laughs> Ink and Ignorance says the best thing he picked up from Jason is the two foot rule. And that's, that's the truth, right? Most times your players are just gonna look at these from a foot to two feet away on your tabletop. And so, you know, worrying about how it looks, you know, an inch from your face is not necessarily um, the reality of, of the application for these, um, for any minis, really. Uh, I'm also going to do the little buckle here. Probably should use a smaller brush, but I'm just touching it to give the idea of that metal. And again, this isn't for every miniature, folks. This is literally for those that you just want to get on the table. You have a session kind of the next day. Uh, and you want to spend a couple hours painting and you want to get as much done as you possibly can, this is kind of how you do it. Well, this is my version of how you do it anyways. And it just takes away a little bit of the dauntingness of it, right? People are like, oh, it would take me forever to paint a miniature. And I've been doing this a while, but there's, but, you know, following these techniques, really isn't anybody that couldn't paint miniatures this fast kind of with some with some practice and again they're not they're not incredible looking they're they're fairly mediocre from a painting perspective especially for something that you know um, put my name to or whatever but oh I totally got metal in the guy's hair it's gonna happen All right. 
Now, once I put this gunmetal on, it's on to, um, while the gunmetal dries, before I can add a wash to it, I'm going to do some dry brushing to really bring out some of the details. I'm gonna focus my dry brushing on the areas that for the, with the most, um, I guess, effect. Um, Should I take that back? I'm going to do the skin next. Okay. Yeah, it was the little laughter, the kid laughter that did you and I know. <laughs> That's the creepiest part of that music. 20 minutes. Okay. Um, what did I say? Skin. Jason, focus. I'm actually going to skip the heavy skin tone, which I do have on the list, um, just because we don't have time for it. Uh, you can use that as a base coat for the skin. I am just going to use cadmium skin and then use a flesh wash, and that should get her done. Um, this guy still has white hair, so I have to figure that out because I haven't painted his hair. I didn't decide what to do. So look, as you do that, all of a sudden, it starts to come to life a bit more because now you're seeing some skin. He's also got some, a bare chest here. So we're just going to add a little bit of skin color in his chest area like that and on his arms. And this is kind of the missing ingredient that really will set this miniature apart. Or, or, or not set it apart. Sorry, it won't set it apart. <laughs> um, this is what will really bring it home and start to make it look like a decently painted miniature because now you've got that delineation between the armor and so on. So that kind of works there. I'm getting quiet now because I'm honing in for the last uh, the home stretch here. Like I said, I've got people people betting on me now to finish this. Creepy footsteps in a creepy house. There we go. Okay, the skin on that one again, nice and simple. Still have to do the beards in there, but I don't know how I'm going to do this in 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to make it. Okay, focus, Jason, focus. Focus. There we go. This is when I start to go turbo speed, folks, so just bear with me here. Um, again, I'm just using cadmium skin to lay down a skin layer across the mini. Also trying to get a bit of his chest here. getting Facebook messages here. That's that sound. I got to figure out how to, how to mute that. I may need to. Of course, it's our Into the Mist cast just, just chatting in Facebook. As I shut down Facebook, folks, if you have any comments, um, for now, we'll have to, we'll have to go. All right. If I don't quite finish these this week, what I'll do is 
uh, maybe whatever I'm painting next week, I will tag on a little bit of time at the end, perhaps, to finish these. If I, if I end early, I usually end a little early. On regular weeks, I'm not trying to paint six miniatures. Sorry, Albert Tacos. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Almost done, almost done. Dark skin, dark skin, good. Okay, so those are done. Uh, black wash on all of the metal areas. Don't even know if that gun metal is dry, but yep, dry enough. I'm just getting the main ax blade areas. Uh, the, the ax on the chieftain, kind of the Epic level character is all metal. And the um, smaller one I made, the haft, um, or the, the earlier level kind of barbarian, I made the half wood on my back. Perhaps, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just focus on bringing one to kind of completion so you folks can see that. And then I can just finish those others off camera and then I'll take pictures so you folks can see. Um, and even still, I mean, even if, if I didn't finish these in two hours, you can see how much, thank you for the follow. Um, you can see how much we got done in the course of two hours on six minis. Um, that's pretty good, considering. And again, they're not they're not going to be the best miniatures, but at least they are done, and they can go on the table, and they're painted. Um, flesh wash. Thank you for the sub. Oh, again, wow. Thanks, guys. Okay, flesh wash, same as the other washes. Just putting it on here, letting it seep into the recesses. Don't want it to pool and hide detail, but... There we go. Not that one, not that one, this one. Just hitting the arms here and the faces for all of these. And this is kind of the way I painted like, thank you for the follow. <laughs> I painted uh, the, um, a bunch of zombies. I had a ton of zombies. Um, painted a ton of zombies uh, all in one go of the Whiskey zombies and um, this is the way I did it, just batch painting. I think it was 30 zombies I painted. It was the same way, just do one color on each one and eventually you just get there. Uh, I'm gonna give this one kind of white hair, but I can't write yet because the flesh wash is still wet on that. Um, but I'm gonna go through now and I'm gonna highlight all of the heavy sienna areas with a Parasite brown color. Uh, actually, you know what? The reason I don't have um, no, 
one sec. Oh, thank you for the subscription, Inked in Ignorance. Holy crap. And Mactabalus, and Oso. Did we just reach partner status? I think we just, I don't know what just happened, but all kinds of things are happening on our page that has never happened before. <laughs> What the? Did you guys? Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything that's happening. I'm not sure what's happening, but on the on the rump smith, you just broke the broke the painter. I'm trying to finish this here. Jeez, that's great. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use heavy red on his hair. Man, this light is just something's happening, and it's just going nuts. Okay, here we go. So there we go. There's a redhead. Oh, this one's cool. I'm going to do a couple more redheads, I think. Because uh, it looks really neat. He's got a beard, full beard, all along here. Bring it down. There. Um, does he have... Oh, it's just in the bottom. I give him a mustache. It's fine. And then I may do one more. Oh, I was going to do. Uh, yeah, we'll just do that redhead on that one. Actually, I was said I was going to do red hair on this one. He's got the dark skin with the red hair. It's going to look wild. I didn't even know we could get subscriptions on the Realmsmith channel. And I, we just got three. Guys, if you guys know what's going on, please let me know. Awesome. Thank you. Just saw bits and... Wow. Guys, thank you so much. You mean so much to us. All of that just helps us do what we're doing and bring you these awesome episodes every week. That looks cool. Kind of a dark hair on a on a darker complexion. Or red hair on a darker complexion. Okay. Eight minutes. Gotta find out, gotta decide how to spend the last eight minutes here effectively. Um, I think what we're gonna do is we're going to do some dry brushing. For those of you that are brand new to painting, uh, you usually use a kind of a, a more thicker, wider bristle brush. I'm gonna get some Parasite Brown, fill it on my paint brush like this, and then wipe most of it off on a paper towel. Sounds counter, uh, seems counterintuitive, but bottom line is you're trying to get it as dry as possible because when you do this across a miniature and you kind of brush it lightly along the texture, the paint is going to deposit, the dry paint is going to deposit on the higher, highest kind of areas of that miniature and of that texture and not on the rest, and that will give it a cool highlight. And you can see what it's doing to the fur there, for example. And all of a sudden, these guys start to come to life a little bit. I'm going to do it across all of the areas that are heavy sienna. A little squad of barbarians shaping up here. Okay, so that's that's good for that one. And like I said, even though it didn't get to the level I wanted, um, these aren't far from done. Maybe another 30 minutes or so after this, I'll spend and um, be done. Now I'm also going to dry brush if I'm doing the dark skin. I'm also going to dry the, brush that with the Parasite Brown as well, and that's going to highlight that and bring some color to that. And then I will dot those eyes, which always gives the miniature, in my opinion, the personality and kind of makes it pop. So I will definitely do eyes on all of these after the fact as well. But you can see how all of a sudden this dry brushing really kind of helps a lot.
I uh, keep seeing all this stuff happening on our channel. I'm not sure what's going on. It's just exploding with all kinds of support goodness. I gotta come back to it after and figure out exactly what what's what's happening. This guy, you can see, again, the wash in his face, the wash on all his other areas really help to kind of bring it together. Lighten his hair. I still have that metal there, but, but by dry brushing it, it gets rid of it. So sometimes a dry brush or a wash really helps to to deal with things and you can this is probably one of the best better ones that we've done today that's a pretty decently painted uh, miniature in the time that we did and again the reason is is it because of skill level necessarily it's it's because of the techniques and just batch painting and all of that fun stuff how much time we got four minutes you can see on that on that bear pelt right across the bear pelt the pants now, the only areas that I wish had a bit more detail, I think, are the belts here with the lighter color. I might go back in and delineate those areas a bit more. Uh, maybe add another wash, perhaps. There's ways to kind of like bring that, that detail out a bit more. Um, there we go. And I think that's all we have time for. But you can see, they all show you all of them now. Um, again, the only thing that I would come back and do, uh, maybe I'll do one more thing here actually, is I'm gonna go back to my, um, my bone white, if I can find some. I'll put a bit more, and I'm gonna dry brush a little bit with bone white on some of the lighter areas. So those areas that I both used, um, either heavy brown or leather brown. But like on this one, for example, I'm just gonna go and dry brush this with a little bit of bone white and you can see how that, that fur texture really comes out. You focus on kind of the edges a bit more, focus on the pants here a little bit, but we're just adding little subtle highlights across the miniature. And that will help to, again, just give it a bit more depth. Especially on here, I'm gonna go a little heavier with the dry brush here. So just not wipe as much off so that I can really bring out the kind of the light color in this. Almost looks like a polar bear pelt a little bit. This guy's a bad mamma jam if he killed a polar bear. Those things aren't nice. There we go like that. And then also on the back here, Bruno, come here. Bruno. Across the fur on the back, two minutes. I mean, I really don't have to end at seven, I guess, but I don't know if there's another show on the D&D channel after. Okay. I think that's it, guys. I'd come back. Uh, maybe next episode I'll show you what I did uh, to finish them off. And um, I'll definitely be posting Instagram videos or uh, pictures of all of them. But I will line all of our wonderful berserkers up here so that you guys can take a look uh, up close and personal. This is six berserkers, almost completely painted. Um, Couple more washes, maybe a little bit more dry brushing, and then a base, a color on the base, and they'd be done. So there they are. Ooh. All right. There we go. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Appreciate it so much. That is another wrap on another episode of Noser's Marvelous Tutorials with Realmsmith. Uh, check out Gary Khan. We will be there live. We will be doing a master class on the show floor for 40 uh, guests who sign up for the event. I will be painting a really epic miniature that I'll tell you about in the next couple weeks. 
um, but make sure that you check out the event list as we go here to find out uh, when you can do all of that. We'll keep you uh, updated on when that is over the next few weeks. Again, follow us on D&D Twitch and on the Realmsmith Twitch, as well as on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. You can just type in Realmsmith or Realmsmith TV on the socials and you'll find us there. Uh, tomorrow night, no, uh, Into the Mist, episode four. Very excited. I uh, left on a, a big cliffhanger last night as well. Um, and or last episode as well, and I, I wish you guys could see the uh, dungeon in front of me on the table uh, that we will be unveiling more of tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Thank you so much, everyone. You guys have a wonderful night, and we will see you soon. Peace and be safe. <laughs>